Hello, and welcome to another episode of Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr. Southern. This is part one of the lesson on hypothesis testing, and in this video I'm just going to be introducing the concept of hypothesis testing using the binomial distribution uh, and going through an example. So what I want you just to think about to start off with is, if we were playing a game, uh, and it was a heads or tails game with a standard coin, um, and I claimed to have got 17 heads from 20 throws of the coin, would you be confident to accuse me of cheating? It seems like quite a lot, doesn't it? 17 heads out of 20 seems like quite a lot to get. But I use the word confident because you need to have some evidence to back up your claim. So let's just think about how we could use maths to model this situation. Well, throwing a coin is a binomial situation because you get either heads or tails. There are two distinct outcomes uh, with a fixed probability of 0.5, a half. So if we say that x is the number of heads, then we can say that x follows a binomial distribution 20, 0.5, where 20 is the number of trials that we're going to do, and 0.5 is the probability of a success, uh, which in this case is a head. Now I'm claiming to have got 17 heads out of 20. So what we need to work out is the probability of getting 17 or more heads with a standard coin. Now let's just think for a minute about which results that means are possible, uh, because that's going to tell us what to exclude when we do our calculation. Now, if I want to know the probability of x being 17 or more, what I'm asking is the probability of getting between 17 and 20 heads. Now, it's greater than or equal to 17. When I use my standard class whiz calculator, it will tell me results up to and including a given number. So I need to work out what to omit. Uh, and I'm going to omit the probability that x is less than or equal to 60, because what that will do is it will exclude the results from 0 to 16, leaving me with the results from 17 to 20, which are the ones that I want. So 1 minus. Uh, using my Casio uh, class whiz calculator, n is 20, p is 0 0.5, uh, and x value that I'm trying to work out is 16. Uh, it gives me the probability 0. 0.9987. Uh, so when I do 1 minus that, I'm going to get 0 0.0013 to four decimal places, uh, which is 0.13%. So the probability of me getting 17 or more heads out of 20 is 0.13%. So that is a probability that's so small that you might have reason to suggest that I've cheated. And that essentially is the nature of a hypothesis test. We uh, decide on a level of significance, which is the percentage chance that we say if it goes below that, then it's unlikely enough that we doubt that the probability is actually true. Um, so what we'd be saying in this case is, I don't think the probability of getting ahead with your coin is 0 0.5. I think it's greater because you've got too many heads. So what I'm going to do now is just go through an example where we formalise that using the notation. But it all hinges on the fact, on the idea of, is what's just happened so unlikely that we doubt the probability is true? So, the example that I'm going to go through uh, is this one here. It says, a manufacturer rejects every three out of ten mugs produced due to faults in the glazing process. Uh, in an attempt to improve matters, the glazing machine is serviced. Uh, using the service glazing machine, it is found that 11 out of a random sample of 50 mugs have glazing faults. Uh, test at the 10% level of significance whether the glazing machine service has reduced the glazing error rate. Right, so key information. 3 out of 10 mugs produced uh, due to uh, faults in the glazing process are rejected. So our probability of rejection uh, due to faults is 0 0.3. Uh, we then do a sample and 11 out of 50 of those have glazing faults uh, and we're testing at the 10% level of significance um, whether this implies um, that the service has reduced the glazing error rate. So 
we need a null hypothesis. Now, our null hypothesis, H0, is that the probability of the population is the stated probability of 0 0.3. So 3 out of 10 implies 0 0.3. We then need an alternative hypothesis. Uh, and the alternative hypothesis in this case is going to be uh, that we have reduced the number of errors uh, and therefore the probability is less than 0 0.3. And the distribution that we're going to use, uh, we're going to use the distribution x follows binomial distribution 50, because that's the number of mugs in the sample, 0 0.3, which is our assumed probability. And what we now need to do is we need to say, OK, what are the circumstances under which we would reject H0? Well, we would reject H0 if the probability of 11 or fewer mugs having glazing faults is less than or equal to 0 0.1, which is our 10% level of significance. So we've done this sample, 11 faulty mugs out of 50, um, and we're saying, is the chance of that happening small enough that we doubt the 0 0.3? So uh, we're going to work it out using the binomial distribution, n is 50 uh, and p is 0 0.3. Uh, so I'll get that up on my calculator. Uh, we're going with 11, n is 50, p is 0 0.3. Uh, so, the probability that x is less than or equal to 11 comes out to four decimal places as 0 0.1390, or 13.9%. So the chance of that happening, 11 or fewer, is 13.9%. Now I need to compare that to my significance level, and you can see that it's greater so the probability of that happening was greater than 0 0.1, so not unlikely enough for us to reject our original assumption. So here, we do not reject H0. Uh, and there is insufficient evidence to suggest, and I'm looking back at the question now as to what happened, uh, that the service has reduced the glazing error rate, uh, to suggest that the service We had our assumed probability uh, based on the fact that 3 out of 10 were faulty. Uh, we had our sample of 50 uh, and 11 of them were faulty. So we said, OK, if the probability of 11 or fewer being faulty is less than 10%, that gives us enough evidence to doubt our original assumption about the probability. However, when we worked it out, we found that the chance of it happening was greater than 10% um, and therefore it isn't unlikely enough to have happened um, that we doubt 0.3. So we do not reject the null hypothesis in this case. Okay, join me in the next video where I'll go through another example with a two-tailed test. See you then.